Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. So uh, it's a privilege to stand and debate and uh, speak to this very important uh, motion and uh, issue of parliamentary privilege for the first time. So just as a bit of background, you know, what are we, uh, what are, why are we here today? What are we debating? Well, basically due to whistleblower testimony from public servants, the Auditor General found that there was irregularities in the awarding of government grants with Sustainable Development Technology Canada, SDTC. Specifically, that there were liberal appointed members of the board that were awarded at least $330 million in 186 cases of conflict of interest and paid out another $59 million to companies without authorization totaling approximately $389 million. The Auditor General made this very clear that this falls under the Liberal Minister of Industry who did not, quote, did not sufficiently monitor, unquote, the contracts that were given to insiders. This House of Commons has, uh, supported the Conservative motion that called on the government, the SDC and the Auditor General to hand over all the documents related to this scandal to the RCMP within 14 days. Liberal governments refused to adhere to the will of Parliament and Canadians have yet, uh, and Canadians have yet to hand over those documents to the RCMP and we can only assume that this is presumably to cover up the scandal. You yourself ruled, Mr. Speaker, that this failure to, adhe to adhere to the will of Parliament is constituted a breach of privilege and therefore all business in the House is stalled until this Liberal government complies with your order. A little bit more background, Mr. Speaker, just so for those viewers and uh, listeners back home. The key, key mandate of SDTC is to federally fund nonprofit that approves and disperses over $100 million in funds annually to clean technology companies. A very important role and something that ha that's been ongoing for I'd argue almost decades now and had a clean bill of health up until I believe 2017-2018 time frame. It's arm's length, it's not for profit and was supposed to create and support projects that develop and demonstrate new technologies that address issues related to climate change, air quality, clean water and clean soil. But here's the problems and I highlighted some of them already, right? When the executives, these appointees awarded projects with, over con with those conflicts of interest all started around 20, 2019 under the former Liberal Industry Minister Navdeep Baines when he began appointing these conflicted executives to the board and then those uh, board members began voting for those companies in which these executives or with they themselves held active conflicts of interest. The Auditor General and Ethics Commissioner both conducted initiated separate investigations and this is when a number of these whistleblowers came forward and again, the Auditor General severely found a, a severe lack in governance standards and uncovered this, uh, these scandals. So to get to the crux, you've ordered, Mr. Speaker, these documents be turned over. And the power of this House is greater than any one act, yet unfortunately, the PCO decided to redact or tell the departments to re redact the documents, which then as a result, in our view, and in your own view, was a breach of our privileges. And this is why we're debating today. So that's the background. So Mr. Speaker, I want to take a slightly different approach for the remainder of my speech. I thought, you know what, if I'm going to give a speech on this, what do my constituents? I'm here on the behest of 115,000 constituents in Bruce Gray Owen Sound. So I decided you know what, I'll send an email out to them and hopefully I'll get back some interesting feedback from my constituents. So I just sent that out Wednesday afternoon, Mr. Speaker. And as of this morning, as of 9 o'clock this morning, I received 436 email responses back on feedback of this, of, on this issue. 210 in the first four hours alone. 357 within the first 12 hours and then the remainder since. And I just asked two simple questions. And it's not like I got a big, for those that follow me on social media, you know I'm not the biggest social media person. I don't have a massive following. Uh, but there is about 5,000 constituents in my riding that subscribe to a monthly e-newsletter that I put out. And that's who, those were the people that this was sent out to. 
And I asked two simple questions, really. Should the Liberal government turn over the SDC documents here to the House and to the RCMP and comply with your will, Mr. Speaker? And the second question I asked is, should anybody, any of these Liberal insiders that are found guilty of illegitimately receiving those uh, funds, should they have to pay that money back to the taxpayers? So now, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to start reading some of these quotes into the record. I did have to, there's a, dozens of them I, I couldn't use because the language also uh, didn't meet the parliamentary language standard. So, and I'll hopefully have caught the ones that I've put into my speech, but I'll do my best. I may have to think on my feet here and paraphrase some of the comments. So first off, Brian from Meaford. Quote, the Liberal government must turn over the SDC documents to the RCMP for their criminal investigation and comply with Parliament's will. The Liberal insiders who were awarded contracts through the SDC in Ill illegitimate means must repay the grant money they received to taxpayers. Carroll and Owen Sound said, yes, I feel that the Liberal government should hand over the documents. Not doing so in a timely manner only leads us to assume their guilt. Yes, insiders awarded contracts illegitimately should have to pay back any monies received. Hillary from Owen Sound. Yes, and this isn't the first time this government has been caught in a scandal and giving our tax dollars to insiders and friends, i.e. the Wee scandal comes to mind, but I know there were many more. Janet, I do believe they should have to turn over the documents and be treated like anyone else in this country. If they broke the law, they need to be punished just like anyone else. Yes, I think they should have to pay back all the money. All Liberals know how to do is take our tax dollars and line their own pockets while people drown and lose everything they have. Bob, I've watched all the committee videos where these fraud-related manners were discussed, including that from a very credible whistleblower. I look forward to you pressing Parliament to take action on the points raised. House of Commons debates are very interesting currently as the government tries various smear tactics. Gladys, yes to both, my, both the questions. I'm very tired of governments never considering whose money they are using. They were voted in by the taxpayers, but they feel they can spend that money without giving careful consideration to how that money is being spent. We, the taxpayers, are the employers, and if you will, the government is the employees. Therefore, your bosses are telling you, you have to have more consider consideration concerning the spending of our money. It's not yours to be careless with. I am almost 75 years old and I'm tired of always having to watch my spending while the government just te seems to throw it away. Why bother voting these people in just to have the taxpayer citizens' best interests ignored? I think that's really important, Mr. Speaker, and I think that's good. That, that'll be one of my points as I conclude, is the risk here we have when the government's not complying with the will of Parliament and your ruling is it's undermining the trust Canadians have in our democratic institutions. I'll continue with the quotes. Brian, in my opinion, all political parties in our Canadian government, whether they're the governing party or parties in opposition, must be transparent in their dealings with Parliament, with the other political parties, and most importantly, in their dealings with third parties, whether at arm's length or not, especially w when dealing with government monies. Therefore, the SDC documents must be turned over to the RCMP immediately. Any illegitimate contracts must be returned to the Canadian people immediately as well. You can remind everyone just how quickly all the hardworking people were threatened if they did not return any CERB overpayments they received dur during the COVID crisis. Warren said, I've been a purchase agent for 30 years and I've never seen such blatant corruption in our government. No one, and I mean no one, would be able to get away with this in the private sector. Stephen said, first of all, all documents need to be turned over immediately. I am very familiar with the workings in these environments and processes and procedures. I have been per personally certified for government contracts with the Secrecy Act and understand completely the mess that has been created here and in, any, in many respects how basic it is to follow common sense guidelines, rules, regulations, etc. You may not like the more stringent requirements, but they are there for a reason. 
one only has to look at a Rive can. How much more of a mess do we need to see? How do we get from an $80,000 app to $64 million spent? All funding granted to Liberal insiders needs to be returned to the government coffers and used for good and proper actions to benefit all taxpayers. Don, he said, the judicial system and government is slowly and continuously being eroded and these type of situations do not look good. Randy, I don't know if it's the other Randy or which Randy it is, but any Randy said, I do believe the government should hand over all material related to this matter and also that the members of the party that had the knowledge of the illegal activity should be held accountable in so far as to say that they should lose their jobs and pension. And the Liberal insiders who received the money should be made to pay back every cent plus interest. Megan, she says, I'd say yes to both your questions. If the Liberal government did nothing wrong, they should have no issue in handing over documentation that is being asked for. We should be able to trust the government that is running our country and they should be held accountable if there is if there's wrongdoing. Any grants should be paid back in full if there was insider information involved. Greg says, the fact that they are not turning over any and all related documentation as requested and their tra transparent ploy to issue the documents in a redacted state leaves every citizen with half a clue as to what is currently gone, going on in our country with the distinct impression they are trying to hide a long-standing misuse, if not outright theft, of taxpayer money. As my, eh, talking to me obviously, as uh, the, my representative in Parliament, I will fully expect you to use whatever pull you have within the party to hold them to account. From Richard, yes, absolutely documents should be turned over. The Prime Minister promised in 2015 that his government would be fully transparent with Canadians and to date I have not seen any transparency from this government, only scandal after scandal. It seems the Prime Minister and his government think they are above the law and somehow believe Canadians are happy with his performance. This is unacceptable. What are they hiding? Peter. I have been following this scandal in the committee meetings and I am greatly concerned about the Liberals' actions, or in this case lack thereof, with regards to handing over the documents. What are they hiding? This situation needs to be investigated thoroughly and those responsible should be held to account and if criminality is evident, they should be charged. They are not above the law. From Les, certainly as a private business, if the government requests, requests additional information for my personal tax audit, I have no option but to comply. They should be under the same requirement. If they are not trying to hide something, turning over that information shouldn't be a big deal. Paul, this Liberal government does what it wants, breaking laws, violating the Constitution, or this time, breaching privilege is, is business as usual for them. And if they get away with it virtually, and they get away with it virtually every time with simply a slap on the wrist. Todd says, the Liberal government that ran on being open and honest should be held accountable for their actions. The money that was given out should be returned in an investigation done by the RCMP. This is probably just the tip of the iceberg. From Ryan, over the past several years as more and more corruption has been discovered within our current government, it seems as though our parliamentary system is broken as no sitting members of this government been, have been held to account for their various breaches of trust. From Kevin. I'd have to say that I'm not at all surprised by this type of conduct. It seems to be a regular occurrence with this government. Whether it be a single source contracts or contracts to companies or individuals with, with whom there is ownership or family members involved. Like the Auditor General stated, numerous conflicts of interest. Our current Prime Minister seems to think rules only apply to others and not himself or his circle of friends and caucus members. From Stephen, my response is common sense and would be an absolute yes to both of your questions. I can't believe we, Canadians, are dealing with items of this nature. It's a huge conflict of interest, actually it's potentially criminal. These ministers are acting like they were appointed weeks ago and we both know this isn't correct. They know it's wrong and if proven guilty should be removed from their position. He's referring to me when, uh, when I was CO2 RCR, if, if I was re responsible for this, I would have been removed from my position. Cameron from Georgian Bluffs. 
The Liberal government absolutely needs to be compelled to turn over the unredacted documents for an RCMP investigation. Their conduct has been disturbing in how they've responded to this, alleging that somehow the majority of the House is infr infringing on Canadians' charter rights by demanding that they be accountable for how millions of our tax dollars have been misappropriated to enrich corporations who, have never, who were never meant to receive them. All ineligible re recipients of the government grants and contracts should be made to repay these funds, especially at a time when so many Canadians are suffering under ever-growing inflation, pushed even further by the growing carbon tax. It is of utmost importance that taxpayer dollars be spent appropriately and recovered when we, when we learn that they've been misused. The misconduct we've witnessed before the various sustainable development misuses of money, the arrive can scandal, and all the laundry list of fiscal irresponsibility and culture of lacking accountability in this Liberal government has permeated and metastasized within the bureaucracy of the Federal Public Service. The negative examples at the top have done so, uh, so much damage that there is an incredible amount of work to be done to rebuild public trust in our government infrastructure. Your motion is at the very least one step in the right direction. Mary from Meaford. Yes, the government should turn over the SDTC documents to the RCMP and comply with the will of Parliament. The Liberal insiders who are awarded the contracts uh, through the SDTC in illegitimate means should be ordered to repay the grant money they receive to taxpayers. From Dave, both answers are yes. Accountability needs to be mandated as the Liberals do not do it on their, uh, do not do it on their own. Repay the grants, and if, and if there is availability, a penalty, either monetary or not being able to submit for contracts for a time specified, or both. Keith and Lisa from Owen Sound, absolutely yes to this question. If the Liberal government has nothing to hide, they would turn the documents over. As taxpayers, we have the right to know how and where our money is being spent. I would also agree that the Liberal insiders who re receive this money should pay it back. The current Liberal government has lacked transparency for quite some time on a number of issues. I appreciate the opportunity to share my voice in this matter. Dave, yes, all papers must be handed over unredacted and all must, money must be returned. This corruption must stop. Vicky from Barrow Bay. In a nutshell, I'll keep it simple. In this, in this household, we are tired of the corruption. We're tired of the Liberals playing silly games for their benefit. We need to find the truth. We want accountability, and if there are criminal charges involved, people should be charged. I will leave you to articulate in a matter of which you need of which you need to, but enough is enough. I've been following this situation in the independent media fairly closely. Thank you for the extensive transcripts. Lorraine from West Gray, yes, I am through. Disappointed that the word redacted did not appear in the motion. I'm also disappointed this measure has not been implemented by the people via our representations in the House of Commons concerning other scandals we have seen in this government. Uh, we've seen in this government fail to produce or, or, or only produce heavily redacted documents. My position is that we should turn over the documents to the law clerk and the RCMP. It is every citizen's duty, if they are aware of a possible illegal activity, to report it with or without documentation to the police. The House of Commons is acting on behalf of the Canadian citizens and are engaged in the same process that we are all to consider doing. Yes, I'm a firm believer in restitution and the application of justice where possible. Money can be requested in this situation, I believe. It would be part of a just decision. It would also help Canadians regain some trust in the justice system and in the government. Ingrid, should the Liberal government turn over the SDC's documents to the RCMP for the criminal investigation and comply with the will of Parliament? Absolutely and immediately. And what other business can an employer refuse to comply with the management's order. If the Liberal government refuses to immediately hand over the requested information, this information should be seized by whatever force necessary by the RCMP or another appropriate agency. Those refusing to cooperate should immediately be released from their positions due to ethical, if not criminal, breaches. Why are we tolerating such corruption and insolence on the part of officials who are elected by the people and for the people? I know I'm running out of time, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mel from Owen Sound, absolutely the Liberals need to hand over the documents and any wrongdoers need to be held accountable and to repay the money. From Paul in Gray County, Liberals are working against Canadian citizens and R the RCMP has a duty to investigate all the crimes and charge them. They also have to re repay all the illeg illegitimate money back. From Garnet, this government is corrupt and the people of Canada must remove them from power before our country becomes a totalitarian entity and democracy is dead. Please continue to bring attention to this kind of corruption and waste of our tax dollars. 
I'm not very proud of our country under the liberal regime. We're in danger of becoming a banana republic, and it's too cold to even grow bananas here in Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member from Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Speaker. That last one, um, do thank my Honourable colleague from uh, Bruce Gray Owen Sounds for um, the banana republic without benefit of fruit. It's a, it's a good one. Um, my, my, first of all, I wanted to thank the Honourable Member because we, we don't usually get a chance to exchange with each other on Hansard. And I just want to thank him from the bottom of my heart for the work that we and a number of other MPs have been doing together to try to do the right thing by former members of the Afghan parliament who were women who are now on the run for their lives and have been. And I, I the honorable member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound is just one of the finest people I've ever had the privilege to work with. I just would ask him if there's any way that he can see that we can just get this to committee faster. Yes, it would go faster if the government sent all the documents, but we surely have enough now, given the Auditor General's report and the Commissioner for Environment and Sustainable Development Auditor Report to actually drill down, call witnesses, and get to work in committee. And I, I asked him if he thinks that, the, that there'd be a, mo a way to compromise on this motion. The Honourable Member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Uh, I'd, I'd like to thank the member for her uh, kind words and, and, and my kudos back to her and the other four members that, uh, that worked that we all work together to help these former Afghan women MPs. It was an important cause that uh, we all believed in, and uh, there is power when we can come to a consensus sometimes on things going forward. To get to the, the, the crux of her question, I don't know if I can, I, I'm not aware of any other way to get this resolved quickly unless the government turns over those documents. And the second aspect of that is because, and I know she believes in this wholeheartedly too, this is only the first time I got to speak to this motion. I had 450 constituents that provided me feedback in less than two days. I'm sure that when I talk, look around this room, this chamber, there's lots of other colleagues that would like the opportunity to speak to this and very important issue that their constituents care about. We need to end the corruption. The Honourable Member from St. John Rothsey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the member opposite for his speech. But, Mr. Speaker, I came from my riding of St. John Rothsey to Ottawa to do work on behalf of Canadians. And we have literally been tied up and not doing work on behalf of Canadians for the better part of two weeks now. And, Mr. Speaker, my riding is asking me why we aren't getting to work on behalf of all Canadians. The member opposite, you know, I'm also here, Mr. Speaker, to talk about dental care, pharma care, great initiatives that we're doing. But, Mr. Speaker, the member opposite talked about silly games, and I'm asking him when the Conservatives are going to stop the silly games and let us get back to work on behalf of all Canadians. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Well, Mr. Speaker, I can't speak. I mean, I've, I've sat on committee with the other member briefly uh, in the past. Uh, I actually think there's lots of work getting done in the committees. Uh, I get lots of work done every day here in, the, in, in, in Ottawa when, when I'm here. Uh, the reason we're not getting any further debate or issues dealt with in government business is wholeheartedly because the government refuses to comply with your order. This could all be over tomorrow if the government would just turn over the documents. And as I said, if you would have listened to my response to my, the previous question that I had, I think it's our right, it's our privilege to answer questions or to speak on behalf of our constituents and contribute to the debate. And this is the first time I've had a chance to actually give a speech on this very important matter of privilege. Then I have the Honourable Member for the member for Rimouski, Nejet, Temiswata, Les Basques. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Now, the motto of Quebecers, I have that motto in mind right now, but I'd like my colleague to keep that in mind this morning. The colleague covered liberal corruption, lack of transparency. Well, I'd like to remind him 
of our history because it's important to remember our history. The conservative government, they call them the conservatives, they call themselves the common sense conservatives. They say that they stand against corruption in this world, but when they formed government, there was misuse of public money as well. For example, there was uh, an issue during the G8. $50 million. So his government also refused to hand over documents. There was the scandal of the transfer of Afghan prisoners. There was the robocall scandal, the omnibus budget bill with C-38 in 2012. Here's my question. With such a terrible track record, how can Quebecers have confidence in a potential future conservative government? The Honourable Member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. We have to move to statements by members. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, look, I don't support or stand for corruption ever. I was not part of a former Conservative government. I will not speak to and cannot speak to any corruption. I, the, the member listed, and so I, I don't have the background knowledge to speak to every sim, single case. The Afghan detainee file is one, though, that I, I will speak to. That wasn't a case of corruption. There was allegations. There was parliamentary debate. An ad hoc committee was formed. In the end, thousands, tens of thousands of documents, or pages anyway, were reviewed by members across different parties. And guess what they found? Nothing. This isn't the case here. This is a case right now that we're dealing with of $390 million being of taxpayers' money that's been spent improperly. Conflict, 186 conflicts. I hate to interrupt the honourable member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound, but uh, he will have uh, three minutes and about 30 seconds left in questions and comments. The honourable member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Uh, thanks, Mr. Speaker, and great question because unfortunately I did have to cut off about a page or two of the commentary, but here's, a, here's another uh, comment, I, feedback I got back from one of my constituents uh, this morning. This is from Eric, quote, it is the equivalent to insider trading and should have similar punishment attached to it for all parties involved. Government should be held to stricter rules than the general public and should never be allowed to escape punishment that the general public would not be able to. Using public office for personal gain is disgraceful and, frankly, disgusting." Unquote. Since some comments. The Honourable Member from Winnipeg North. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, too, would like to give a quote, uh, and it's a direct quote from someone in which I think Canadians would, would respect greatly, and that's the former law clerk uh, here of the Parliament of, of Canada. Now, uh, I would suggest to you this is an individual that is truly uh, independent. Uh, and what he says should be taken with very serious consideration, no matter what part of the House one sits in. This is the quote. It is an abuse of its powers for the House to use its power to demand and get documents from the government in order to transfer them to a third party, RCMP. That wouldn't otherwise receive them or to compel the government to give documents to the third party. Look at what professionals, individuals, independent offices. This is one example, not to say what the RCMP are saying. Why is the Conservative Party so focused on continuing with the political game as opposed to listening to what these independent agencies are saying? The Honourable Member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Uh, thanks, Mr. Speaker. Look, I'm not aware of any political games. As I highlighted clearly in my speech, I'm speaking to this motion for the first time in a speech. The, the member that just asked me the question has already spent over an hour and a half speaking. He's given two speeches on this actual privilege motion. So if anybody's playing games, two on this, over an hour and a half, he spoke, he speaks ten times more in this chamber than I do, so I don't understand how it's political games for me to speak on behalf of my constituents, and I literally read, Mr. Speaker, 15 minutes of quotes, and I have pages of them. 450 constituents have give, given me feedback of how upset they are about this uh, in, uh, illegitimate use of taxpayers' money, and ultimately, if the 
former law clerk has advice, he maybe should have provided that to the current law clerk because it was the motion here that was supported by the majority of the members and in, in uh, your ruling, Mr. Speaker, that actually demanded that these documents be turned over.